Shalom family. This is your sister Yitia. And I'm doing this video so people can get an understanding about the Holy Spirit. And so they can also know how to receive the Holy Spirit. So the following questions we'll be answering this video. The first one is, what is the Holy Spirit? Where does it come from? Where does it dwell? And how would I know if I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. So as you can see, I opened um, this video with this poster here that says, Worship in Spirit and Truth. Yahuwah, Yahushua. So you know, when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, they would now from that point be worshiping the Father in Spirit and in Truth. For we know the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth and, is, and the Spirit of the Father. Okay? So, but before we talk about the Holy Spirit, let's go to this verse here because this is very important that we all, if not every day, but at least, at least I would, I would say every day, but at least once a week, we need to understand what this verse is telling us. So, if you have your Bibles, go to um, Psalms chapter 51, verse 11. And it says, Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now, to understand what this verse is saying, it relates to Adam and to his descendants, the sons of Adam. In order to understand why Yahushua had to come, you have to understand what happened to Adam. So let's go there now. Now, when Adam was created, he was created to be a living soul that has the heart of Yahuwah. And you can read about him in um, Genesis chapter 2. I mean, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 2. For when Adam was formed, he was also made from the earth, but he was made different from men. Okay? When the breath of life came into Adam... He became a living soul that day. And his soul was, his soul is immortal. Okay? And his body was an earthly vessel. And he had the spirit of Yahuwah dwelling in him. Now proof that he had the spirit dwell in him. We're going to go to um, 2 Ezra chapter 16 verse 61. I apologize for this video um, for it's not being as precise or neat, but I just have to get this message out. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 61. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. That's very important. So Adam was made of an earthly vessel. The spirit of Yahuwah was dwelling in the midst of his body. And the breath of Yahuwah caused Adam to be a living soul, which was immortal. So to get more understanding about Adam, let us go to the book of wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. But before we go there, let's understand why Adam was made different from any man. Because a lot of people are going to ask, but well, why was Adam made different from the other men that was made that day? Those were on the, another day. Let's see here. So, we're going to go to the book of Ecclesiast Ecclesiasticus which also is known as the um, Ben Sarah, and this is in the Apocrypha. If you do not have that book, do not worry. Um, I'm going to show this in the video. And this is chapter 33. We're going to start at verse 10. And this is telling you why Adam was made different from other men. And all men are made from the ground, and Adam was created of the earth. In much knowledge, Yahuwah had divided them and made their ways diverse. 
Some of them have he blessed and exalted, and some of them have he sanctified and set near himself. But some of them have he cursed and brought low and turned out their places. Let us focus a little bit. Here we go. As the clay is in the parlor hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as like of him best. Good is said against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High. And there are two and two, one against two. So as you can see, the Most High chooses one to be near him and chooses another to be a curse. Sound familiar, Israel? How we are the chosen nation? This is very important, Israel, because you are the light and salt of the earth. You are the one to lead all to Yahuwah. But let's get back on track here about Adam and the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go to the Book of Wisdom, chapter 2. To understand how Adam was created. We're going to start with verse 23. The book of the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2 starting at verse 23. For you who were created man to be. I mean. Let me sorry. For you who were created man to be immortal. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through, the, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. So this verse tells us a lot here. We know um, Adam represents the earthly Adam, and we know Yahushua is the, is the representation of the heavenly Adam. And we'll find that in another chapter that we'll talk about later on. But when Adam ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's when everything changed. Now his soul remained immortal, but the body that was supposed to be immortal was no longer. It became mortal. In other words, death came in, and every day our body is dying. Every day. If you ever smell blood, you understand what I'm talking about. It stinks. Okay? So every day our bodies are dying. And the spirit of Yahuwah have left the um, sons of Adam. Because that spirit cannot dwell in a body that is sinful. And we'll find that in Genesis chapter 3. I mean Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. So let's turn that now. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. And Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. And that is evident today. For even Israel, I'm talking about the nation, I'm not talking about the individual, do not have the Holy Spirit. They resist the Holy Spirit. And you will find that in the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51 to 52. For if they had that Holy Spirit on them, they would not have killed the prophets nor his son. Hmm. But we'll talk about that later on in the video too. So the next area we need to go to is what is the Holy Spirit and where does it come from? Let's go to the book of John. But before I go there, because we also need to talk about where does the Holy Spirit dwells. Let's we'll go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27.
The spirit of man is the candle of Yahuwah, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's a hint, my people. The spirit of man is the candle of Yahuwah, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now, the inward parts of the belly is the bowels. Okay? That is where the Holy Spirit dwells. Let's get some more proof. I will take you to Philemon chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 7. And that book is before Hebrews. Okay, about there, Israel. Here we go. Philemon, chapter 1, verse 7. And we're talking about where the Holy Spirit dwell. And this is very important to know. Chapter, I mean, verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Bowels. Hmm. Let's go to verse 20 of Philemon. And this is Paul speaking. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in Yahuwah. Refresh my bowels in Yahuwah. That's another hint. And the reason why I mentioned this, because when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, when it ascended, I mean, I'm sorry, when it came upon me, I immediately fell to the floor and I felt it moved from my bowels I'm talking about my stomach, people. Up to my tongue. I had no control of my tongue. The language I spoke was an unknown tongue. And you can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. For there is an unknown tongue that uh, sounds like no other language that needs an interpreter. And at that time, I didn't understand why. My tongue sounds different, but now I understand based on 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And, and, and after the end of church, a woman came to me and she told me I was a woman of Yahuwah. I didn't understand what she mean, but now I do. For I know he has a great purpose that he wants me to do. And this is what this is one of the reasons why I'm making this video so you can understand my people how important the Holy Spirit is to have. Okay, so let's go to the book of John to understand what is the Holy Spirit and where does it come from. And we'll find that in chapter 14. Verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, which whom the whom the Father would send in my name, he said, Teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit comes from the Father. And he's going to teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. You can also go to John chapter 15 verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Do you see, my people, the correlation here? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and he comes from the Father. So this is why when we read, oh, let me, before I go there, another thing people ask, can we see it? Well, we're going to go to John chapter 14, verse 17. So you know this. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. 
but ye know him, for he dwell with you, and he shall be in you. Do you see, my people? The Holy Spirit, you who would dwell in your bowels. This is why when, he, when you are baptized with it, or when he's speaking, he comes from your bowels to your tongue, and you have no control of your tongue. Also, let me go to the book of John, because this is fulfilling what Yahushua said about true people who will worship Yahuwah. I got to read it. It's in the book of John chapter 4. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahuwah is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So do you see? You have to receive salvation to get this spirit. And what is salvation? Salvation is Yahushua. For Yahushua is the salvation of Yahuwah. And when you believe that he is the son of Yahuwah, and you believe that he died for your sins and was resurrected from, from the grave, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's how you get it. Read Romans chapter 8. Verse, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 13. And then for more information about the Holy Spirit, we're going to go to the Acts chapter 2. Let's go there because the next question is on you're going to have, how do I know I, if I have been baptized with the Holy Spirit? So Acts chapter 2 got the answer for you, my people. And when the day of Pentecost, let me get this focused a little bit, fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rush, as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Yehushua. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. I'm going to skip to verse um, 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Do you see that? They were speaking other languages, my people. But yet they could understand one another, for they came from different countries. The Jews did. Let's skip down to verse um, 11. Greeks and, uh, and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of Yahuwah. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaning this? Others mark and said, These men are full of new wine. So when people see you speaking in tongues and, and they see you, you know, you just don't have no control of your body, you fall down to your knees, they're going to be like, What is this? This is how you know. And for the unknown tongue, it do not sound like the Colossian tongues, my people. It's a different sound. And I can't describe it. For I had no control of my tongue. But it's mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Read about it. For that tongue has to have an interpreter, my people. Okay? So let's go to um, Acts chapter 11. Hmm. Again, it talks about the Holy Spirit. So you can understand it, that you do not need water, my people, to get this. For the water baptism was the representation of the spiritual that would come after Yahushua. In other words, it was the carnal representation. Just like we have an earthly representation, we have a heavenly representation. And now we are operating in the heavenly body. Do you understand, my people, what I'm telling you? And I know some may not, but some will. Let me go forth. Acts chapter 11. And I'm going to read, um, starting at verse 12, because this is when Peter came from Cornelius, and his brother approached him and accused him of associating with, with a people who was uncircumcised. For, you know, Cornelius was a Gentile. And that's what chapter 11 was talking about. But let's read at verse 12. And the Spirit... Beg me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brothers accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. 
and he shewed us how we had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. He talked about that day at Pentecost, my people. And then remember I, the word of Yahuwah, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as Yahuwah gave them, like the gift as he did unto us, who believe on Yahushua HaMashiach. What was I that, that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified Yahuwah, saying, Then have Yahuwah also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Mm, this is good, my people. So let's get an understanding about the first Adam compared to the last Adam. For the first Adam was our forefather, but the last Adam was Yahushua. <laughs> Let me go to that chapter. Let me see here. Uh, hold on. You go go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Oh, this proven to you. There is an unknown tone. This is seen in First Corinthians chapter fourteen, my people. There is an unknown tongue that required an interpreter. So don't let my brothers tell you otherwise. All right, now First Corinthians chapter fifteen. We're going to start at verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening 